Today on Monkey Life. The team are in South Africa preparing to transport a very overweight orangutan back to the UK. First she will be angry, then she will protest. But it's Jeremy who gets locked in the crate. See, everything's going according to plan here. <laughs> and the Bachelor Boys are having a duvet day. <laughs> Monkey World is based in the English county of Dorset. It's home to more than 240 monkeys and apes and is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. Alison Cronin and her team rescue and rehabilitate primates from all over the world. Everybody's brilliant, really good. Today, they're traveling 6,000 miles to South Africa to meet an orangutan living near Johannesburg. These luxurious surroundings are home to 13-year-old Oshin. Oshin is the apple of her owner Brenda's eye. She got her from a safari park in Indonesia and has looked after her since she was a baby. Just came in, I sat down and I spoke to her a little bit and then she came and she sat in my lap. And that was it. Love at first sight. Brenda has treated Oshin like one of her own children. I had to bath her, I had to make sure she had her formula. It was exactly like looking after a little baby. And nappies, huggies. Had to make sure she had naps every afternoon. Put her to bed with her teddy bears. It was wonderful. But with only humans for company, Oshin has never learnt how to live as an orangutan. I tried very hard to keep her as an orangutan, but she became human imprinted. When she saw everybody walking upright, one day she got up and walked. As she's got older, Oshin's become stronger and difficult to discipline. She eats anything she can get her hands on and is now dangerously obese. Can I have the biscuits, please? Ta for Mama. I'm trying to put on diet. It's not easy because she's terribly spoilt. You know, some of the staff just give her sweeties through the window. I don't allow her to have Coke anymore. Oshin can do no wrong. Brenda loves to entertain her, and she's even allowed to drive. You want to come up here? She was so spoiled, she knew Mummy would let her do things, so she just carried on doing. Like all orangs, Oshin is highly intelligent and into everything. Come, come to Mum, come, let's go. Now a teenager, Oshin has become harder to handle. And Brenda has realised she needs to find her a new home before it's too late. You know, I'm not young anymore. Anything can happen to me. Or what about her? So I think it's time to let go. Although it's killing me, but I have to think of her and to stop being selfish. Brenda recently saw an episode of Monkey Life and loved the park so much she got in touch with Alison and flew over for a visit. I went up to Monkey World, very, very impressed. And that's where she's going now, to live a good life with her own type. Alison, animal director Jeremy Keeling and wildlife vet John Lewis are nearing the end of their mammoth journey. We've just landed in South Africa and we're on our way out to meet Oshin for the very first time at Brenda's home, so we're all really excited. Welcome, welcome. How's 
This trip has been months in the planning. Come on, Oshin! Hey, you miss us! Before the team can attempt to transport Oshin back to Monkey World, they have to gain her trust. Remember, I was telling you. That's Jeremy, darling. And it's going to be down to Jeremy to create a special bond with her. She's quite a lovely, reasonable person, actually. I mean, we always knew that she had a weight issue. Um, but you know what? It's not that bad, and she's young, and I'm impressed how active she is, even with her size. And I would have thought that she would be a lot lazier than she is. I'm sure she's still going to crave her sweets and junk food, but, you know, she'll have to get used to loving her lettuce and celery and that kind of thing with just a normal diet, not a reduced diet, but just a normal diet that we feed our orangutans, that weight's gonna fall off of her. While Oshin is savoring her last marshmallows, back at Monkey World, a healthy and nutritious breakfast is being prepared for the orangs there. Fruits, all different varieties. We've got some strawberries, we've got some oranges, and we've got some mango. And I'm just throwing them out for these guys because they do like their fruit a lot. The staff scatter the fruit to give the orangs some exercise. They're naturally quite sedate primates and don't move around unless they really have to. But it's amazing what a spurt Amy can put on when there's food around. Like Oshin, Amy is short and stout and prone to weight gain, just like some humans. So the staff are more careful with her diet. Lucky and Roro, on the other hand, have catwalk figures. Being tall and slender, they don't have to worry so much about what they eat. Once the food's gone, they're just going to go and sit down and be orangutans and stare at the world again. So it's short and sweet little burst of enthusiasm before finally, oh, it's all gone and we'll just watch the world go by. There are three orangutan groups at Monkey World. Tuan is the leader of this group and may end up being a mate for Oshin once she's lost some weight. Tuan arrived at the park nearly 10 years ago he was captured in Taiwan after he was found wandering loose in Taichung City. Although no one knows for sure, it's likely that Tuan was smuggled from the wild as a baby and kept as an illegal pet until he escaped. It was a major operation bringing him back to Monkey World, but he settled in well and has now fathered three babies at the park. Xiaoning, Kai, and Dinda. In South Africa, the crate that carried Tuan to Monkey World has arrived for Oshin. Alison reckons she's roughly the same weight, so it should be strong enough, although no one will know for sure until she's weighed at the airport. I'm pretty confident. This box carried Tuan all the way from Taiwan, which was a 24-hour journey. Um, and we've even beefed it up a bit since Tuan was inside. So I'm pretty happy. Jeremy thinks it's no problem. Ah, Brenda tries Oshin's crate out for size. Yeah, she can make a nest, she can turn there's around. There's a big window in this door. I think that there's enough room. What do you think, Brenda? I'm very comfortable. That should be fine. Yeah. Listen, should be fine. The team are still not sure how they're going to get Oshin into the crate. If they can't tempt her in, they'll have to anaesthetize her. But John is reluctant to do that because of the health risks. When you knock them down, when you anaesthetize them, there's so much extra weight pressing on the diaphragm it stops the lungs expanding. So their respiration is rather poor. And I haven't actually to stop. So what we don't want is sedation. 
Well, what we do want is to remove anxiety during, you know, a flight which is going to cause a degree of anxiety. So to try and calm her in the days leading up to her flight, Oshin's having a nutritional supplement. John has asked Brenda to mix it in with Oshin's jelly, one of her favourite treats. Time for mummy that. Give it thank you. There's no doubt that Brenda has doted on Oshin over the years. But keeping an orangutan like this and bringing her up almost as a human is virtually unheard of. Alison believes having a primate as a pet always ends in disaster. Oshin had started out as a tiny infant with her and, you know, very adorable, and Brenda loved her very much and cared for her like one of her own children. But, of course, she grew up, and as these apes grow up, they become strong, overbearing, opinionated, and in the case of most primates, if you're keeping them in a very unnatural human setting, they start becoming aggressive and out of sorts, um, and that was starting to show with Oshin. Careful. Oshin's now reached adolescence. She needs to find a mate. All of those instincts are natural and inborn in her. And as she comes into adulthood, it doesn't matter how much attention Brenda showers upon her. Oshin has other needs, and that's to find a mate and have companionship with other orangutans. Jeremy is still trying to gain Oshin's trust. He has a special relationship with orangutans, and if anyone can succeed, he can. Over the years, he's hand-reared several at Monkey World, including Amy, who he still has an amazing bond with to this day. And her son, Gordon, who he looked after immediately after he was born. All the Orangs love him. But Oshin hasn't made up her mind about Jeremy and is still testing him. You're so tickly, aren't you? It may look like he's playing with Oshin, but he's trying to let her know, in a very friendly way, that he's in charge. Maybe he's taking things a bit too quickly, though. Alison and her team are in South Africa, preparing to transport 13-year-old Oshin back to Monkey World. The time has come to introduce Oshin to the crate which will be used to carry her to her new home. What's this? Well, this is pretty. Let mummy go inside. Ideally, they want her to climb in of her own accord to avoid having to anaesthetize her. Mummy's sitting here. Look, Oshini. Come look here. They're trying to turn it into a play session but Oshin can't work out what all the fuss is about. What are you doing, darling? Come sit here with Mum. Hello. Come sit with Mum. Sit nicely. Finally, she decides to give it a go, but she's careful to keep a grip on the outside. <laughs> Jeremy is definitely making progress with Oshin, but she's still a little wary. Very he plays with her to lighten the mood. We've got to establish a, a hierarchy here. Yes, we do. <laughs> I don't care what you say. It's going to take several play sessions for Oshin to get used to the crate. For an orangutan who would normally live in a Bornean rainforest, Oshin has grown up in very unusual surroundings. At Brenda's ranch, she's lived with a variety of wild animals, but never with her own species. For Oshin, um, there's no doubt in my mind that Monkey World is the very best place for her to come to, because not only do we have three different groups of orangutans, we're used to dealing with very unique circumstances with individuals that come effectively with baggage. They've been kept in very unique and bizarre situations, and it's what we do at the park. We look at each individual and work with them in order to rehabilitate them back into a more natural living situation. It's time for another visit to the crate, with one small change. Jeremy has added a door. 
Yeah, we're out. Pull it. Okay. She has her own way. We've just put the door in now to see if she, you know, obviously it's, when she goes in, the door's going to be closed behind her, so she's now got to familiarise her with the door. Never girl! A bag of peanuts. As long as it involves food, bribery always works with Oshin. Nice. Good girl. She's feeling really quite comfortable and happy in there, which is exactly what we wanted. So I don't think... I think she already gets it. I'm devastated at her game, but... Now that I see how she likes Alison and Jeremy, I'm feeling a lot better. And she loves playing with Jeremy, as you can see. Oh, is he going in? So really, it's a t case now. We want to keep the balance. We don't want to do it so many times that she gets bored of it, and then on the day that we need to move her, it's no fun anymore. It's hoped when O'Sheen arrives at the park, her relationship with Jeremy will continue to grow. But at the moment, that looks in doubt. See, everything's going according to plan here, <laughs> as usual. Who's in charge now? Later, the fun and games are over. It's D-Day for O'Sheen. <laughs> While O'Sheen is playing with Jeremy, thousands of miles away, there's lots of fun and games going on at Monkey World too. The staff are constantly trying to keep the primates busy. And today, Butch's group, better known as the Bachelor Boys, have been given a variety of bedding for some afternoon fun. Ben is interested in the blankets, but he's in no rush and finds a leisurely way of heading down to investigate. Sammy, on the other hand, is strays in there, favouring the blue blanket. Ben is the youngest and newest member of the group, but he shows he's already feeling at home with the bachelors by going straight for a pillowcase. Low-ranking Seamus isn't interested in blankets, but is definitely up for playing with his old pal Ben from nursery days. However, Ben decides he's much more interested in his bedding. Alpha male Butch and Jester, his number two, watch what's going on, but aren't terribly impressed. Joint second-in-command Buxom knows that as a high-ranker, he can have whatever he wants and go wherever he wants. So he heads up high with his blanket collection for some me time. Sammy's now decided that red is maybe more his colour. While Buxom's got his hands full, Ben cheekily pinches his blue towel. Just one more blanket and time for a snooze. Watch out, Buxom's about. Just as Ben is nice and cosy with his nest of bedding, Buxom gets his own back by creeping up and nabbing Ben's biggest blanket. And while he's up, he'll have these two as well. This is O'Sheen's last day in South Africa. But I'll be OK. Yeah, you will. I'll be OK. Within hours, she'll be boarding a flight to the UK. Everyone at the airport is expecting her. But the big question is, can Jeremy persuade her to climb into the crate or will she need to be anaesthetised? Well, we've got everything sorted and it's about time to go, really. Um, you know, she's a little bit agitated because she hasn't had her normal routine this morning. You know, she's waiting for her breakfast and we've not given her anything in case walking her into the box willingly doesn't work out. John's all ready and prepared to give her an anaesthetic, so really she can't have a full belly of food. So she's a bit pissed off because she hasn't had her breakfast. We've had, we've had playtime. She's OK. Obviously something's not quite normal because the, the waitress hasn't delivered the food as normal, which is not good. But um, apart from that, everything's fine. <laughs> She's starting to get a little bit edgy, you know, even with Jeremy here. It's all nice and she respects him and so on, but she's not yeah. happy. She's not I'm had breakfast. Now. Everybody's mucking about and she's, you know, she's a bit. Ready. That's why I'm keeping my distance here because she has zero respect for me. And that's okay. You don't need to. But this is your man and you got to listen to him. 
you're a good girl. I know. I know. See, she's trying to look around behind me to see what I might have in my pockets or if I've got any snacks or treats. And I don't have anything. I'm really boring today. Today's the big day. But as far as O'Sheen's concerned, it's another play session. Oh. <laughs> there we go. But everyone else is on tenterhooks. She seems impressed by the blankets and wood wool the team have put in the crate for her journey. We've got here. Here you go, pardon. And can't resist taking a closer look. This is all part of the plan. But will she fall for it? No, 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 no. See what you think. She isn't easily fooled. She still has a firm grip on the outside world. Now that she's got a foot ready yeah. to. No, if Jeremy easy. doesn't act quickly, their whole plan could fall apart. Hey, what's that doing there? I'll just put that in there. Is that right? Game over. For John, it's a massive relief. Well, I mean, this couldn't be better. It means I don't have to use tranquilizers or anaesthetics. Um, I'm happy as a, as a clam. Next time on Monkey Life, there's panic at the airport. But we've got the customs to release. I don't let the customs to release, eh? Customs office closes in 15 minutes. Will O'Sheen be allowed to board? And in Paddy's group, cheeky youngster Bart hitches a lift. <laughs>